today we're going to look at Swift Swallows, House and St Martins and the differences and similarities between them. In appreciation we'll be making some gliders inspired by these amazing birds. They all migrate to the UK from Africa over the summer months to breed, often having more than one brood in a season. They're very sociable birds and like to nest in colonies, often returning to the same site year after year. Swallows House and St Martins are all part of the Hirondine family and can be seen from March, April through to September, October time. Swiss belong to the Apodidae family along with hummingbirds and are only here for about three months of the year between April and June. Swifts have the largest wingspan of the four birds, shaped like a crescent moon. They are thought to be the fastest birds in level flight. Once they leave the nest, they will spend their whole lives on the wing, even eating and sleeping. They have very small feet, unsuitable for walking or perching, but have been known to cling to high vertical surfaces. They prefer to glide high up in the summer sky but will come lower at early morning and evening to feast on insects and drink by gliding low over the surface of ponds and such. Swifts nest noisily in colonies using cavities in roofs, buildings and cliffs. They use very little material, even collecting this in flight. In comparison, the swallow has a much smaller wingspan with a long forked tail like a toasting prong. Swallows are very entertaining flyers, performing highly skilled aerobatics. They dart and flit, scooping low to the ground and banking high up to the treetops. You can often see them resting in groups on telephone wires. They build cup-shaped nests using mud, preferring outbuildings with plenty of nooks, ledges and beams. During their migration, they cover about 200 miles each day, roosting at night in flocks at traditional stopover spots. As they eat insects, they're able to feed as they travel. Nevertheless, it can still be perilous and many die from starvation. Their numbers were severely affected this year en route to the UK, as storms hit their flight paths over Greece. Sadly, many swallows perished. At different times, the weather has greatly affected all these birds. Extreme weather conditions can create a lack of water and food and have other knock-on effects. Swallow and swift numbers are becoming increasingly affected by modern buildings as they lack the nooks and crannies they favour as nesting sites. There's more information on this on the RSPB's website and swiftconservation.org where you can take part in nationwide surveys and find different ways to help. Like swallows, house martins build a nest from mud. Once upon a time they would have used cliff faces as their nesting sites but now make use of the eaves on buildings. Nests will be used year after year by the same colony, but not necessarily the same pair. They feed entirely on aerial insects so prefer to be near water or agricultural land where there's a wealthy supply. Most house martins will only breed for one year and don't tend to live for very long. Last but not least is the San Martin, the smallest of the Hirondines. They are found around bodies of water where they like to feed. San Martins nest in cliffs and vertical banks, whether they be sandy, gravelly, by the sea, a river or even a railway line. They sometimes take advantage of man-made tunnels such as drain pipes. The male and female will both dig a tunnel, creating a chamber at the end where they will nest. Nesting sites will often be used year upon year. As they often use active quarries, they are protected so workers will leave them to go about their business. So for this make, you will need an old cereal box, scissors, paints and a paintbrush, a sharp pencil and an old magazine, a black biro pen, craft knife and ruler and some white tack and some string. There are two templates for this make which you can find on the Creative West End project page.
Cut your pieces out and use them to trace the shapes onto the inside of your cereal box. Cut these out. Next, make a hole through your templates where the dots appear at the end of the dashed lines. Place your template on top of its corresponding shape and mark the dots through the holes you've just made. Remove and join up with a ruler. Get an adult to help you with this next step. Get an old magazine or mat to protect the surface you're working on. Using the craft knife, cut along the lines you've just drawn. If you're using a material thicker than a cereal box, you'll need to measure its width and make your slot correspond. Next, paint them in corresponding colours and dry. Then repeat on the reverse side. Particularly with the shiny package side, you might need to do a few coats, each time drying in between. Once the paint has dried, you can add some detail with Biro Pen. The paint will have made your shapes curl, so if you like, you can flatten them under a pile of books. Once you're happy with your shapes, you can gently slot them into place. You might need to give them a wiggle so they sit flat. Add a little white tack under the beak. This adds a little weight so they glide more effectively. You might need to experiment to find the best position. Once you're happy and if needed you can colour the white tack in. Once you've finished flying them, if you like, you can add a hole and with some string make them into hanging decorations. You could even get a couple of sticks and use them to create a simple mobile. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks very much for your company. I'll catch you again soon.